All right, this will be the first video posted based on a request in the comment sections of another video. So if you have something you want to see, put it down in the comment sections and I will do my best to see that and make a video on it when I'm able to. So today what we're going to talk about is squat ancillary exercises. So stuff you can do to build up your squat. I will also do one on bench press and eventually one on deadlift as well. But today we're going to focus on the squat ancillary exercises. And if you stick around to the end, I will also come cover some very, very crucial things. I consider these exercises almost like a practice, something that would help you with the skill of this. But the other ones are principles, things you have to get right to have success. Or at least I did. So the first exercise that I did, and I, when I say these guys, these aren't something necessarily I say are written in stone, but these are the exercises I did to have a really high total and be in the elite category for my weight class, regardless of my age, which if you didn't know, I'm pretty old. So this is weighted step ups. So when you see this, First thing you're wondering is like, yeah, I'm lean. Well, I was very, very close probably to getting, uh, competing. I was probably within a month or so of competing at 132. So I probably weigh around 140 pounds here. So I'm in striking distance to, to make weight. Um, but other than that, the way you set these up is you want to make sure that your hip crease is just a little bit below the top of your knee. That way you're good to go for competition depth of squatting and you're also making sure if you have a hip shift on one side that you're working each leg equally as opposed to when you have a hip shift you're usually kind of putting more weight on one side and that's the other awesome thing about this so you you can work each leg individually and learn how to drive through that one leg and you also get rid of that muscle imbalance that you would have if you're constantly hip shifting and using one leg more than the other. I purposely liked using the safety bar squat um, because I like to be loaded at the shoulder versus holding dumbbells maybe, or even a barbell, I wanna decompress the shoulder as well. The next exercise that I liked, and it's important that you don't overdo these is pause squats, okay? The reason why is you, you don't wanna overdo these is it's gonna put a lot of stress in the bottom part because you're going to a dead stop and then starting back up. And you can see I do them or did do them with both a safety bar and also a barbell. The third exercise, and this is perhaps my favorite, and I think probably the most important, is half field squats. Hatfield squats were coined by Dr. Squat, so Dr. Hatfield. He had an amazing squat back, hell, probably before I was even born, and I'm old. So this is one I think this is the very first set I did years ago, and I had a really wide stance. I don't do it like that anymore, guys, and I actually get more benefit out of doing them narrow, and that's why for this particular exercise, I actually found four sets that I'd done in the past. Two of the sets are wide, and... That's more of a volume one. The next set that's coming up here is I bring is also a volume one, but I, you can see I brought my legs in more, and this is the way I squat now. I switch back to high bar squatting with a narrow stance. I get more out of it, and I actually think it's better for my health and integrity of my hip, knee, everything. And you'll see this is actually heavier, and I am heavier as well. Here, I'm the last one I was probably 140 pounds. Here I'm approximately 150 pounds like I am today. And um, I'm going deeper and I'm doing more weight and probably just as many, if not more reps. So you can see that's, that's how I um, like to squat now. Now coming up with the higher intensity ones with the lower reps, why, why you would want to do these and when to do these, okay? Why is you can get a lot of volume in and it's much safer because you have your hands free there and you're always gonna be able to do more weight. If you've ever seen somebody like squatting like this, and like, oh my God, how are they doing so much weight? 
you can handle more weight because you have your hands free and they're not up on the bar and your upper body to some degree can help assist doing squat and you can achieve if you're doing not too much weight. This is too much weight. I should be able to get a little bit more range of motion. You know, I'm not saying you should go into butt wink. That's not what I'm saying. That's when you are putting yourself in a precarious position in your, your lower spine, guys. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you should have easily squat depth for a competition. And I am riding the line if I'm even not too high there. So you see in this next one is the absolute heaviest I ever went in these. And I could probably do even more than this now. I'm able to do three or four reps here. And this is 525 pounds with um, the yoke bars heavier than a regular barbell. And you can see like my depth's pretty good. And this is absolutely brutal. It's a good thing I haven't muted. I was probably screaming at the top. Anyway, so those are good for volume. They're also, if you want to like outside of the, the season, like to build volume, you can also use them. If you used a lower amount of weight, you could use them on deload weeks while you're actually getting ready for a competition. All right, this is pure safety bar squats, okay? They are very good to do. They're good for volume um, when you need to Deload the shoulders. Maybe you're having a little bit of impingement or something going on with your bench. This is a good way to deload those shoulders a little bit, especially if, if you're a low bar squatter and you're getting ready for competition. Mix in some of these, take the load off. And they're, they're hard too, because they're kind of, the way they feel if you've never done them is they really, really force you to work on your thoracic extension, your upper back. And they're kind of like the feel, if you've done front squats and you've done high bar squats, they feel kind of in between there. So, um, they're definitely a great exercise to do. And if you have a narrower stance, they're also kind of a secondary ancillary, which is kind of redundant to say, um, exercise for conventional deadlifting. So if you do conventional deadlifting, if you bring in a, a stance the same width as your stance for de conventional deadlifting, this could be a really good exercise to do. And you could actually even maybe do some heavier, but squat high more of the angle that your starting position is for your deadlift rather than doing a squat. I never did do that, but I could see somebody using that as an exercise for to improve their deadlift too. All right, guys, I'm going to keep going here, less um, ancillary stuff, but I want to talk about more of the principles that I think are really important. And the, the first one is you guys got to understand, none of this is going to mean a hill of beans if you don't have mindful effort built into everything I do. It's not just good enough. You are not going to be 100%, let alone 110%, which doesn't exist. If you're lucky, you get close to 100%. But you have to be mindful. You need to put a lot of effort in. And when I'm saying mindful, you need to be smart about your training. It's not just about working hard. It's not just about working smart. Okay, you have to do both. You have to do both. If you're, if you're going to be the, your best, I'm not talking about anybody else, either whether you like them or you hate them as a lifter. I'm talking about you. You are not going to be your best and you're not going to be as fulfilled if you're not truly thinking about everything, like recovery, intensity, everything. You have to have your nutrition done. Okay? You're not going to recover the same way. You know? And don't get mad at the other guy that if he's got his nutrition down. He could be working the same intensity as you. Everything looks the same, but he's got his diet down. Well, kudos to that person. They're going to do better than you, even if they have the same genetics. You know, it's about, it's kind of like having a high total for the meat. You have to have everything together. So it brings me to my next point. You have to, this is gonna be ideal, getting everything queued up as good as you can because you have to figure out your optimal frequency. You have to figure out how much volume you can recover from, not just daily, but per week and in three to four week periods. That's gonna help you gauge on how to undulate your intensity. Meaning guys, you don't, once you get do this for a little bit, you're not always going at the same intensity. You're gonna vary it even throughout the week. You know, you have some lower intensity days, you can have some higher intensity days, okay? So your nervous system can heal up too. Um, one good 
almost like a golden rule for me now is I always leave two in the tank. I wish I'd done this my whole powerlifting, I don't know if you want to call it career or when I was competing, is even on the last set, leave two reps in the tank, okay? The more you do that, the more you're kind of building up and you're getting compounding interest, you know, over time. Because you're never, you're going hard enough basically to continually progress, but not so hard that you're going to blow out, okay? It's better to gain, you know, one or two percent every three to four months than it is to gain five and then get hurt and you're out for a year, right? So, because uh, then you probably lose that five percent you gain in that short period of time anyway, okay? So, be smart about it. If you're doing three sets of 10, you should be able to do 12 your last set, okay? And then I'm not saying to do an AMRAP, so sometimes people do as many reps as possible. That's what that acronym is for on their last set. I'm not saying to do that, okay? Because that will get you into trouble too. Guys, you can't tap out all the time. If you have a big problem with that, going too hard all the time, you better find a partner, wingman, or a trainer, or somebody to help pull you in so you don't hurt yourself. Okay, it's important. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're not trying. In fact, you're trying harder by having someone help. Okay, bring somebody in so that you don't self-sabotage yourself, I guess is what I'm saying. And then last but certainly not least is when you're setting up all this, you have to understand that you need to have most of your ancillary lifting needs to be in the off season. So it doesn't matter. And this isn't just a powerlifting thing. This is any sport, okay? You need, if you really want to be good in your sport or whatever you're doing, if we don't call powerlifting a sport, that's fine. I'm not hung up on that at all. But whether it's wrestling, baseball, basketball, whatever the sport is, soccer, you're going to do a lot of your work like this type of motions that we talked about today, the accessory, ancillary movements, whatever that is for your sport in the off season, okay? And if you take, if you're serious about really, really improving this, you are going to be very serious about it, but you have to still use the training philosophies in the off season. Realize that you're in season isn't when you, the only time that you train mindful and smart and hard to some degree, okay? You need to taper the things down in season to primarily whatever skills you need to succeed in that sport or that skill, okay? So in the off season, you're doing everything to deload the joints, also to bring up some of your weaknesses while you have the time. Because if you're truly, truly going hard, guys, and it's, it is not just in a competitive sense compared to other people, but if you're truly gonna do your best, that's what you need to do. So these ancillary movements, just know that you're not gonna do a lot of them while you're getting ready for a meet. These are done in your, air quotes, off season, okay? With that said, guys, I hope you um, hung out to the whole time. It did take me way longer than I ever thought <laughs> to find these videos and come up with this video. It's not that I regret it at all because I'm here for you guys. I, I've moved past my competitiveness. Now it's all about me being stronger than I was the previous year. You know, I'm 46, but it's important to me that I pass on this information to people that, that really want it. So if you do like it, please give it a like, subscribe, so that the algorithm can find more people like you. That's what it's all about, okay? I actually feel great it, about the questions, you guys. When you, I can tell when you're listening and watching by the questions that you ask. So if there's anything else you really wanna know, put it down in the comments. I might not get to it right away. I work full-time as a personal trainer um, and I'm trying to get to other people's questions that they've already written down, but I will do my best to find it and make a video on it if I feel like I can help you in that area. So I hope you have a good, good day, guys, and I will talk to you again very soon. Peace.